Hey guys, it's Maggie and I am back today. I'm very excited for this video because as you can see, we're gonna be doing some stoma care today, but I thought it might be helpful for nurses that maybe come on YouTube who are interested in learning stoma care. Maybe they're a little bit nervous with changing an ostomy bag. I thought that this video might be helpful and I also thought it would be helpful for patients to see what it's like on the nursing side of ostomy care. I am an RN. I used to work in pediatric GI and I would change a lot of kiddos ostomy bags, so I'm very used to it. And I also worked as an ostomy telehealth nurse. And you may or may not have noticed that I am the proud owner of a stoma myself. I'm gonna be taking my experiences both as being a nurse and caring for other people's stomas as well as my own. So hopefully this is helpful to you. I do have two cameras running on me, so hopefully you're able to see my stoma really well and hopefully my stoma behaves. In this video, we're gonna be talking in depth about removing the old ostomy appliance and getting the skin prepared for a new appliance. I have all of my products laid out beside me here so I can show you them. I may use some, I may not use others, but I'm gonna talk about a lot of stuff. This is gonna be very in depth, so if it's a little bit too much information for you, I have plenty of videos on my channel of me just quickly changing my ostomy bag. In the hospital, it can take a bit longer to change an ostomy bag for a multitude of reasons. You know, the patient's in pain, it's a brand new stoma, and the nurse is doing it for them. But as a patient goes home, the process speeds up quite a bit. So you can definitely find videos on my channel of me very quickly changing my ostomy bag. It's a routine that I've done for 13 years now, and I'm just, I'm used to it so I can do it quickly. But I really wanna go in depth in these videos to hopefully trigger some thoughts with you, um, things to look out for with patients with stomas, and yeah, so let's get into it. So we think it's really important to start out with the fact that having a stoma, getting a stoma, is a very emotionally and physically fragile time for a patient, depending on how they're feeling, you know, what their health state is, why they got their stoma, if it's permanent or not, this can all dictate how that patient's going to react after surgery. Um, some patients are, you know, all about it because their stoma gives them a new life without sitting in the bathroom for a long time and having to deal with that. But there are other patients that this surgery came to them as a shock and adjusting to life with an ostomy, whether it's permanent or not, can be very difficult. There are gonna be patients with temporary ostomies that just really don't wanna learn anything about it. It's basically like, let's get through the next few months until I can get reverse. Which is really difficult because when they go home, they're gonna have a really hard time adjusting and caring for themselves. And they're gonna rely very heavily on caregivers that they may have, and it becomes a problem when they don't have a caregiver at home. So it's definitely something that as a nurse, you want to, no matter the patient, whether it's a temporary ostomy or a permanent, really push that patient into learning about their stoma, becoming comfortable looking at it because even if they have a visiting nurse at home or they have somebody coming into the home every now and then to help them with their ostomy care, um, leaks happen. Emergencies happen with it. They need to be able to care for it themselves. Also, I recognize as a nurse, um, especially on the floor that I used to work on, nurses can be nervous when it comes to ostomy care. Um, I feel like every nurse kind of has their one procedure that they're they're just worried about doing wrong or you know that it might get messy, which is a totally reasonable response to stoma care. Stomas can be a little unpredictable, it happens, um, but you definitely wanna make sure that you are comfortable with stoma care as best as possible because what you show to the patient is going to kinda affect how they are feeling about their stoma. If you just changed the bag two hours ago and it's leaking and your patient comes to you and tells you that, you know, don't act annoyed like, oh my gosh, I gotta change this thing again. Use it as a learning opportunity for that patient. This is great timing to show you what we do when you know, you're know you dealing with a leak. Try to use every opportunity as a learning opportunity and just don't make the patient feel like a burden. The first thing you gotta think about when it comes to removing an old appliance is 
When are we doing that? Um, we don't want to delay care, especially when there are leaks happening. We don't want to add tape around the edges if you see a leak. And you have to recognize the signs that your patient may be experiencing a leak. Sometimes it's not as obvious as seeing output coming out of the sides of the ostomy flange. Sometimes it's the patient saying, you know, man, it's really itchy around my stoma. That usually means that the effluent has gotten onto the skin and the enzymes are burning the skin. So you want to change that ostomy as soon as possible. You also want to think about how active that stoma currently is. It's definitely easier when the stoma is a bit more quiet. Right after surgery though, stomas are at their most unpredictableness <laughs> and the output tends to be a little bit looser especially with ileostomies that is something to keep in mind um, what you can do most of the time after surgery the patient will have some sort of clear window to be able to look at the stoma you can take a peek at it and see if you're seeing any output come out um, the patient may already start to feel the output themselves and recognize when they're having an active stoma also generally if they're hungry or if they've just eaten the stoma is going to be a bit more active so you want to avoid those times but if they're having a leak again don't delay care even if the stoma is active you want to get that thing changed because you don't want there to be continuous skin breakdown that's going to make every change afterwards harder on you and harder on them it's uncomfortable some patients have no issues when it comes to the adhesiveness after showering. Um, they don't notice the wafer peeling or anything because of the water, but some patients do. So I definitely recommend taking a shower, if they're taking a shower every couple of days, taking that shower and then removing the old appliance. So that way you're kind of freshening everything up at once. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about how to actually put on a new appliance. But for this video, I want you to note that this is a really good time to get all of your supplies in front of you set up, get everything cut to size if you need to, get any extra products that you may or may not need. You might not know until you take the old appliance off, like stoma powder. They might need stoma powder, they might not. But get that stuff ready to go in front of you ahead of time so you don't have an uncovered stoma and you're shuffling to get all your stuff. Also respect the patient's privacy. You know, if there's family members in the room, maybe ask them to leave, ask the patient what they're comfortable with. Um, I feel very similarly with my stoma care as somebody who is going to the restroom. I don't want people in the bathroom with me when I'm doing my stoma care, whether it be emptying or completely changing the appliance. I like the door closed, I like it locked. I don't want viewers. It's just like if you were helping a patient onto a commode or a bedpan, same thing. So respect their privacy, their dignity with it. Um, it's definitely important to maintain that so they feel comfortable during the change. And you also want to protect their clothing. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, they, they can explode. And that's just, that's the honest truth of it. Depending on what they've eaten and the consistency of their output, I have had my stoma shoot across a room. Yes, I know. <laughs> it can happen. So I always say, you know, for nurses changing a stoma, don't stand in front of it. <laughs> and make sure that you're protecting your patient's clothing if they're wearing their own pajamas or if they have a gown. Um, obviously, accidents can happen and you might get some output on their clothing, on their gown, and it's okay. But if you can protect it, and not have that happen, it really does make the patient feel better about themselves. I do remember times in the hospital where output would get on my clothing and I just felt really ashamed and embarrassed. And I really appreciated it when the nurses would, you know, take action to protect my clothing and make sure I felt clean. A lot of patients struggle with that feeling of, uh, they feel gross. Like, oh, I feel gross about this. And they shouldn't. It's not gross. This is a medical device and it, it does great things for people and it's just a different way of going to the bathroom. It's important to remind your patient about that. So we wanna protect the clothing. What I would say is in the hospital, get a chuck that has the plastic backing um, and I would tuck it into their underwear or their pants, whatever they've got going on, place it underneath of the stoma so that way anything that drips downwards 
you're catching. I do not have any chucks at home. I thought I did, so I'm actually gonna use a dish towel. Normally what I would do is just take a small piece of toilet paper and place it right into my pants. I'd tuck it right in and that's all I need at home. But I wanna show you what I would do in the hospital. I would go a little bit overboard just to ensure I'm protecting all of the clothing. So I've got my little dish towel here and I'm going to tuck it into my pants and have the ostomy bag hanging down over just like this. That way if anything drips down, I'm completely protected. You also wanna think about the position that your patient's in. A lot of patients in the hospital, when they're getting their stoma bags changed, uh, they might be lying down. That might be the most comfortable position for them, but when we think about gravity and an active stoma, if you're lying down, it's going to come out onto the skin. So if they're able to sit up at least a little bit, um, you know, get the head of the bed up a little bit, that could be helpful in just having it at least drain in one direction rather than all around the stoma. When you sit patients up on the side of the bed, you also wanna note what their skin looks like because in different positions, the skin can kind of bulge up in areas, you know, you, you really wanna have the flattest surface possible when changing an ostomy bag. It's gonna get the best adherence. I personally find standing to be the most comfortable. My skin is the flattest. I can see everything well. Um, I don't remember ever laying down to change my ostomy bag, and that's just what I prefer. Obviously, you gotta work with your patient on what they can do, so the main goal is to get that skin as flat as possible. I always keep extra bits of toilet paper around at home. You might have some gauze, some paper towels, whatever. Just in case the stoma begins to have some output, you can place the toilet paper over it just to catch it. Um, depending on the consistency of output, you know, you might wanna have a few pieces of gauze or a few pieces of toilet paper around. Stomas are forceful, so just, you know, you might have to change that toilet paper out every couple minutes, so keep that in mind. So as you're getting ready to remove the old appliance, uh, remember that this might be painful to your patient for a couple of different reasons. First of all, their skin's getting used to having adhesive on it. Um, the adhesive might be sticking pretty well, so when you peel it off, it's like ripping off a Band-Aid. Their skin might be raw. The junction between the skin and the stoma may be healing still, so you wanna be very gentle with those first few ostomy bag changes and especially the removals because it can be really sore. That's when adhesive remover is extremely helpful. Now I know depending on what your materials has at the hospital, you know, you're kind of limited. Um, adhesive remover is wonderful and there are ostomy specific adhesive removers that do not have any oily residue. They don't leave oily residue on the skin. I know there's those citrus pads they're so oily and just do not use them around the stoma because when you try to stick the next bag on there, it's, it's not gonna stick. If your hospital has adhesive remover spray, it's the best. It's the best thing to help gently take off an ostomy bag. It'll make the process so much easier on your patient because it can hurt. It can hurt peeling off a bag. Now for myself today, I've had this bag on far too long. You can see it's kind of coming off here. Um, I'm gonna be able to peel it off no problem, but I'll show you how I would remove it in the hospital with an adhesive remover spray. And I will have a nice little trash bag available for myself. A lot of different ostomy appliances, uh, if you've got a two-piece system, usually the trash bags will come in the bag box, but a lot of different brands do provide a little trash bag, and this is the easiest thing to do. Take the trash bag, tuck the end of the bag in there as you're getting ready to peel it off. Remember, you've got all of your other supplies ready to go in front of you. You've got your flange cut to size. Um, you've got stoma powder, skin barrier, any paste or barrier rings that you might need. You can place it on the bed next to the patient or on their bedside table, you know, whatever works for you and the patient. All right, so we can get into removing the bag. So I have an adhesive remover spray. This one is from Convitec. There are many different brands of adhesive remover spray. This is one of my favorites. And what I can do is as I am peeling the bag off, spray it. And you'll see that the flange easily melts off the skin. Do you see how easily 
that was loosening. I'm gonna clean up my skin a little bit for you so you don't have to be subjected to my output. Keep that little trash bag handy nearby so that way if you use a little bit of toilet paper or tissue or gauze or whatever to block the stoma, you can throw it right in there and have an easy cleanup at the end. You might be able to see on camera, there's a little bit of residue on my skin still and I like to use an adhesive remover wipe specifically for ostomy care. So meaning there's not gonna be any oily residue and it's gonna dry quickly. This really helps clean all of the skin. You can use a non-oily soap and a little towel just to gently clean the skin. If your patient's skin is healing, you know, if they had some skin irritation, you do not wanna scrub the skin. That will peel off those good new healthy layers of skin um, and make the problem a little bit worse. But I'm going to use this adhesive remover wipe and get the peristomal skin really clean so we have a good surface for the new appliance. You might also note that I am not wearing gloves when it comes to this. Obviously, as a nurse in the hospital, your patient might even do this. You're gonna put on gloves um, and your patient might wanna put on gloves too because this is my stoma, I'm in my home, I'm not going to wear gloves. Obviously, I will wash my hands afterwards. I'm going to gently clean my skin here Get any extra residue, you'll see a little bit of output. This really makes for the best surface. Um, I know sometimes patients have divots in their skin that have been filled in with paste or um, you know, some barrier strips. And sometimes we wanna be so gentle, we don't wanna peel that stuff off and put the patient through more discomfort but it's not going to help their skin to leave that on there. So we really need to clean off the skin as best as we can. You may notice that if your patient just had their ostomy bag changed a couple hours ago and they have a barrier ring or paste or something like that, it might be really gooey and difficult to get off. But again, it's still important to get it all off to get the best possible stick with the next one. Over time though, when you have a barrier ring or paste, they are meant to absorb a bit of fluid, a bit of that effluent, and they kind of congeal. So when you remove it two to three days later, it's a lot easier to come off of the skin. Because my stoma is well healed, um, I have no issue you know, cleaning nice and close next to the stoma, but for your patient, you know, it might be painful, so be very careful. This is a great time to inspect the peristomal skin as well as the stoma. Look to see if there are any divots that you might need barrier paste for. Um, you can look at any skin irritation around the stoma. That'll tell you if they've had leaks. If they've had their surgery fairly recently, it's important to look at the junction between the skin and the stoma to see if there's any separation. That needs to heal over time, and sometimes there is a bit of separation. You may have to get wound care involved if you see that because they will pack it like a wound, and if it is severe enough, they may need to go back to surgery. So it's very important to look at that as well. You can also look around the stoma for any bumps. They're usually granulomas and they are very painful to patients. Um, usually they result from pressure being placed right on the junction between the skin and the stoma. I've got one right there, you can kind of see. I've noticed that when I use paste, like the liquid tube paste, that it either dries too much or it disintegrates. So the rough edge of my flange kind of puts pressure on my stoma. And then I have these little granuloma bumps up here and they're very painful. So I have personally found that using a barrier ring, it tends to be a little bit um, softer on my peristomal skin. I notice that the granulomas go away. If the granulomas get bad enough though, um, a surgeon can come in, the wound nurse can come in and do silver nitrate and actually burn those granulomas off. Again, painful, but it helps it heal faster. You can also try a little bit of stoma powder on there to dry it up. It's also a good time to look at the stoma, look at the coloring. Has it retracted into the body at all? Is it prolapsing outwards? How does it compare to the last time the patient had their ostomy changed? Um, you wanna make sure that you got that nice beefy red color. And not to toot my own horn here, but my stoma is actually one of the easier ones to change. When they're retracted, sometimes you need to use convex products, which is a whole other layer. As my stoma explodes towards the end of this video, um, <laughs> 
A WOCN can help you determine if you need a convex product for your patient. All right, I'm going to grab a new towel for the next video where we discuss putting on a brand new appliance, which very clearly I need. This is just proof that Yes, stomas do explode and you need to be prepared for yourself and for your patient. But since you've got the skin all prepared, you've got the old appliance removed and the skin is nice and clean, you're ready to move on to the next video and put on a new ostomy.